Hello, welcome to Aussie Target. In this video, we're going to run through some of the development features in 1.4.8.2. Uh, apologies if the audio is a bit, bit muddy. I haven't got my nice microphone handy. So, first feature we're going to run through is the Follow Me feature. So, traditionally, if you were setting up a cake, and we'll just quickly put some numbers in here, uh, select a waypoint and draw that cake. If you wanted to move the cake you would uh, select your unlock tool here, move the waypoint, select the waypoint to get the new location and then redraw it. Now we have the follow waypoint checkbox down here. All we need to do is check that. It'll highlight it so we know that this waypoint is live for following and now if I drag and move that waypoint after a moment it will update the position and move the rings for you automatically. Now this is particularly good if we tie this in with our waypoint tools and, uh, and we go for the move tool if we need to follow this on a particular northing. Um, so if we zero that, it should um, sorry, bring it down to the corner there. So yeah, if we want to stay on the 8500 northing here, uh, we can just use the nudge tool and move that cake wherever we need to go to put that in the best position for uh, for what we're doing. So that is the follow me tool. Now one thing to know about this obviously when you finish with it turn it off. Uh, alternatively you can leave it on if you go to a second task and you move that waypoint then it's not going to know to update it until you go back to task one. Uh, the second thing is if you close the task ring window and move the waypoint it's not going to update it until you go back to task rings and then it will update it. Uh, final thing just to know if you have two waypoints for example if you have two cakes uh, or you have a cake and a donut or something like that select that one and draw it there is no reason <coughs> you can't have this one live to follow and move that wherever you want. Go back to task one and move task one and it will follow. It will only follow the one that is live. So if you move task two's waypoint, it will not update task two until you go to task two. But that's a pretty minor limitation. Um, it just keeps it under control in terms of how many things it's got to check and how often it's checking it and likewise by closing this down it means it can stop thinking about it and, and trust that you're not going to move waypoints on it otherwise it spends a whole time wondering if you've moved something so you don't need to do that to your computer uh, so that is your I'll just clean that up that is your follow me feature for task rings Okay, next thing we're going to look at is flight wind start and stop. Now I've got the simulator going here, I've got the altitude simulator running and uh, that's it down there. So uh, we're climbing at 100 feet per minute. Let's just dial that up, let's go 400 feet a minute. Um, flight winds. Okay, so this is recording flight winds data. We've now got a toggle down the bottom here for turning this on and off. So potentially uh, if you were going to, to jump in and do a, a particularly vigorous climb or something, you can turn recording off momentarily. Uh, it will ignore it and you'll see as we climb through our 2050 feet here, we don't get any recorded data. Um, basically just so you don't mess up your stream of data with a descent or a climb. So you've got that option of turning that on and off whenever you like. And, uh, and you'll see there your next reading came in at 2150. <coughs> so that is your flight winds recording uh, on and off. I'd also suggest uh, if you are having, you know, every now and then people contact me and say they're having weird crashes or something like that, um, have a go at turning your flight recording off just in case because that's probably one of the more intensive things that's going on in the background in terms of how it's analyzing that information and if for some reason it's uh, you know getting bad data through there somehow 
uh, through the GPS, you know, sending corrupted information or something that could be causing crashes. I don't, I honestly don't know why I thought I had caught everything possible going on there, but that may be something to worth, worth trying if you're repeatedly having problems. Um, not that that many people are, but anyhow, that's flight wind recordings. Big numbers. Okay, now this is one that's been requested by a few people. Um, and I think it'll actually be quite useful. Every now and then you have a particular number that you need to look at during the flight, something that you may be interested in. It could be time to go, whatever. So instead of having to scan through all this information, you now got the option of clicking on a field and you'll get a gigantic set of numbers and you can select any one you want and it will just jump between them. It makes the window as small as it needs to be or can be however much information is displaying but very handy so if you you know just want to keep an eye on what, what direction you need to turn uh, or you know what your bearing is uh, your speed AGL whatever uh, you can jump in there and do that to move it around click on this status area at the top here and if you need to edit it go to the settings tool and basically you can just dial up or down that size and make it bigger, make it smaller if you want, and, uh, and close that. It will remember the position of it. Let's close it. Um, it won't remember each one's position individually. They'll all go into the same spot and they're anchored at the top left. So if you do put that down in the bottom right of your screen, for example, and you go to ETE, it will disappear off the side of the screen. And you just need to drag it back on uh, for each one of those. Uh, and that is your big numbers, so that's that's kind of cool. I like that one. Uh, final one here is layout sizes. Obviously, with everyone going to higher resolution screens and things like that, uh, I'm using a Surface Pro 3, and uh, like most people, I found that I'm having to squint at numbers. Everything is a lot smaller than than it should be. One thing Microsoft seemed to have really struggled with is sorting out scaling of you know fonts and things like that on on these high resolution displays. Uh, it's not it's not particularly easy to dial things up and down. But anyhow, uh, so I've set this up so you can do it. So if we go to our adjust layout here, we've now got the option of changing the overall size. So we start off on medium, uh, small rather. If we go to medium, we get uh, everything a bit bigger. Go to large, we go to gigantic, and uh, and you can see I'm having to scroll this around to keep this on the display. This is only set up at 720p. This recording, so that's why. Um, but that obviously, if you say apply, gives you a a really nice size, bunch of numbers to work with. Um, if you want to adjust any of the fields individually, you still can. So if something's not so important, you can just dial the font size down or up there and, uh, and set that to the way you want. Uh, one thing I'll just quickly point out, oh, sorry, also while you're there, obviously, if you want to change the color, you just click on it, change that to whatever you like. Um, if we say reset, it will reset everything to the large size. If you do reset, you'll notice it'll bring in this extra field here, the top secret field. Uh, that's just something I was working on. And uh, it's still here in the development version. So you may want to just move that out so that it's not clogging things up for you. Um, I may reveal what that's about later on, but not in this video. And, uh, and that's it. So we go small, go apply, and uh, we're all back to, to normal. Uh, oh, sorry, I meant to mention with this big numbers window, sorry, if you don't want that to come up when you're clicking on things or you're clicking on things by mistake and it's coming up, you can go into your settings and here we've got the big numbers and you just simply turn it off. It won't close the window for you, but, um, but now if I click in here, I won't get those popping up. So there we go. That's... Uh, the latest development version. Now a number of people have been flying with this. Um, it seems to be 
pretty stable. Uh, it seems to be working well. I'm certainly going to be flying with it in Dubai, the World Air Games, in uh, a week and a bit's time. So feel free to give it a go. Uh, obviously, give it a good workout on your practice flights and just be ready to, to roll back to the other version if you are having problems of some description. Uh, obviously, I'll be at the event, so come up and say hello. Any questions, happy to answer them as long as it's not during a flight briefing. And uh, yeah, good luck for everyone competing. Should be a good event. Talk to you soon.